Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a training that I recently provided during a workshop. And in this training, I show you how to fix several resume mistakes. And I also show you how you can use ChatGPT to update your resume and make it align better with the role that you're going for as part of your career transition. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Now that you guys know that this is possible, I want to show you guys this in action, essentially. I want to show you guys how this would work. And uh, I'm giving you guys this extra bonus today, right? I'm doing a resume review here. I'm going to critique a resume and I'm going to tell you some of the things I did based on using chat GPT, just like I told you guys, right? So I'm going to show you some of the things I did um, in order to make this happen. So let's keep going and then you guys will understand. So this is your extra bonus for today. All right, so you guys can see on my screen, do you guys see this resume? Is it pretty clear for you guys? If it is, let me know in the chat. Let me see, all right, great. So this resume, and I already gave you the answer. Next time I'll do it where the answer is delayed. This is not a good resume format because this resume is not ATS friendly. For those of you that don't know, Whenever you submit your resume, there's something called an ATS um, system. I think it's called Automated Tracking System or something like that. That's what it stands for. That actually reads your resume and takes the information and puts it in the system of the company. If you do not use the right template, right, the ATS system is not going to understand your resume and you are not going to get put in the right box for the recruiters and hiring managers to take a look at. So resumes that have pictures, right? I picked this one because you had this big picture and all those fancy sections are not ATS friendly. So applicant tracking system, thank you. So if you are using a resume that just looks fancy, yes, it may look good to you, but if the ATS system cannot understand what you've read, you essentially wasted your time. And this is going to, let me tell you how you, you will know your resume is not ATS friendly. Well, one of the ways, that's not the only way. One of the ways is every time you apply, you get an auto response that says, no, thank you. How many of you have had that before? How many of you apply and the next thing you hear, boom, no, thank you. Yes. One of the reasons, I'm not saying it's the only reason, one of the reasons could be that your resume is not ATS friendly. So you want to make sure that at, at the minimum, first of all, before we talk about any of the content on your resume, one of the first things that you want to do is ensure that you are using an ATS friendly resume template that is easy for the ATS system to read so that it can actually understand what's on your resume and move it to the next section. So if you guys understood that, I want you to type ATS, 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 ATS in the chat because I want you to, I want to understand. All right. So make sure you, in my program, we have an um, ATS friendly templates, but there are many sites online that you can find ATS friendly templates. And at least now, you know, so you can search for them. All right. So that's the first thing I'm critiquing on this resume. So again, your template has to be ATS friendly. The next thing is your professional summary, right? Remember, your professional summary is at the top of your resume. And I mentioned earlier that if there's any section that's reviewed on your resume, it's your professional summary. And I looked at this one. So this is an example for someone that's in a help desk um, role. So I and guess what? I used ChatGPT to come up with this. I literally typed in ChatGPT. I want you to create a professional summary for me. I'm someone that works in help desk and I'm looking to get into IT audit and compliance. And it actually did a decent job. It gave me a good, you know, summary. But I'm here to critique it because you might be making some of these mistakes yourself. One is... This is kind of long, right? You want you don't want this to be too, too long because if it's too long, then the recruiter or the hiring manager might not look at everything. So make sure it's not too long. Make sure it's straight to the point, not too short, obviously. You don't want just one or two sentences. But again, you don't want it to be too long because all the stuff in the middle will just get lost. So that's one. Number two, if you... Um, 
talking to you guys as people looking to go into IT cybersecurity audit and compliance. So if you're going into IT cybersecurity audit and compliance, you do not want to start your professional summary with your prior role. So when, if I'm a hiring manager for audits, let me ask you guys, so, so it's not just me, right? If you are a hiring manager or recruiter for a role that you posted for audit and compliance, and the very first thing you see is help desk support, do you immediately feel like this person is going to have experience in audit and compliance? Let me see in the chat. And the reason I'm teaching you this is I want you to be able to critique your own resume because I can't review all of your resumes here, right? We have hundreds of people here, right? So yeah, the very first thing should not be your old role. One of the things you have to know about your profile summary is it should be forward looking. It should be talking about the role you're going into, not the role you're leaving. So the focus should be more on what you're going towards and not what you're leaving. If you guys got that, can you guys say, I got it, I got it, I got it? All right. And then the third thing is you see this language here that says looking to transition into a career in IT audit and compliance. Let me ask you another question. Yes, I'm a teacher. I ask a lot of questions, okay? If you wanted to hire a plumber to come work in your house or an electrician and you're interviewing people and someone says, looking to become an electrician, will you let them touch your... Uh, someone said, no, I won't hire them. You didn't even let me finish the question. Are you going to hire them? No, because now you don't know if they know what they're doing. Now, if this is, if you're a college student, right, and this is a role that's like an internship or zero experience entry level, okay, they don't care. But if you're looking to get an experience role because you've already worked before, and most of the people here I expect are people looking to just transition from one career to another, not new college graduates, you're not looking to do anything. Again, you want to show that you can do the job. As a hiring manager, if I'm hiring someone to do a job, I don't want to hire. Yes, there's something we call training, but training doesn't mean I'm starting from ground zero. You guys understand that? Good. So as a hiring manager, I don't want to do my work and your work and still be training you. There's how we like it, work-life balance, right? So it's very important for you not to have this looking too wordy in your resume because it already just, it's a dead giveaway that you really don't know about this. And the hiring manager is going to go with somebody that actually knows how to do this. Do you guys, are you guys learning this? Are you guys learning here today? Okay, great, great, great. I told you guys I was going to train you guys, so good. Now, so we're not done. We still have one more part to go. So we've talked about how you must use an ATS-friendly resume, and we've talked about your profile summary. Should, shouldn't be too long. Make sure it's forward-looking and focused on the role you're going, um, you're applying to, and make sure that you don't have this looking to language that's just a dead giveaway that you don't know what you're doing, all right? And then the third thing, uh, the third item I want to train you on is um, the bullet points, right? So I'm not sure how big this is on the screen. I tried to make it as big as possible. So hopefully you guys can read some of this. Can you guys read some of it, right? Um, here, right? So I said, again, going with this help desk experience uh, example, I said, okay, chat GPT, give me some bullet points. And chat GPT did an excellent job giving me bullet points for a help desk. But again... Right? Am I applying for an help desk job? Am I applying to a job in help desk? No. So now I'm not telling you not to claim your help desk experience, but you need to update these bullet points to align with your new career goals. We are looking forward towards the goals that you're trying to achieve towards your new career. And I'm going to show you exactly how you could do this. And guess what I did? I used ChatGPT and came up with this in less than 10 minutes. I told ChatGPT, I said, thank you, ChatGPT, for this bullet point. Sometimes you have to be nice to ChatGPT. But I'm looking to go into IT audit and compliance, and I need to show you the hiring manager that I, I understand how to do this work. So I want you to replace this bullet point and make them sound more um, in alignment with audit and compliance. And ChatGPT said, I got you. Okay, and let me tell you, this is what ChatGPT gave me. So I selected three here that I want to highlight. So this one that said, manage Active Directory accounts by creating, modifying, and deactivating users, ensuring secure and efficient user access control. 
based on what we learned on day one, for those of you that were here, you guys already know that this already has something to do with audit and compliance. So you're not lying. You just need to reframe it. And so now we're going to just say it a little bit differently, professionally. Manage and monitor compliance of Active Directory user account provisioning, modification, and deactivation to ensure adherence to internal security controls and regulatory requirements supporting audit readiness and maintaining secure user access controls. Are we saying the same thing, but are we saying it better? If you guys think it's better, put it in the chat. Do, can you see that it's the same role you did in Help Desk, but now the hiring manager is like, oh, this person knows about controls, about access provisioning. So you, and I didn't, I, I told you I did this in less than 10 minutes on chat GPT and you can do it too. So this is not about when people say you have to lie. It's not, you're not lying on your resume. You're, you're making it align better because it is what you've done, but you're not wording it in a way that the manager understands because you cannot be speaking help desk language when the hiring manager and the recruiter are speaking audit and compliance language. You have to speak the same language. Let's look at the second one. Monitored and managed system updates, patches, and antivirus deployments, ensuring endpoint security compliance. This is very important, right? So this is something that's critical from a security perspective that you've done, but it's also very critical to overall compliance. So you want to give yourself, you know, bonus points. So ChatGPT rewarded it, and I liked it. It said, oversaw and enforced compliance with system update, patch management, and antivirus de uh, deployment processes, ensuring endpoint security aligned with organizational policies and regulatory requirements while supporting audit and security readiness. What do you guys think about that? It's the same thing, but worded better to align. Are you guys tracking? Do you guys understand? Do you guys now really see how you can make this work for you? So again, this is doable with the right skills. You just have to get over your mindset block. Let's go over the third one and then we'll wrap up with this one. Again, the third one says participated in asset management, tracking and updating hardware inventory and assisting with life cycle replacements. Again, excellent help desk work, but we can be worthy to say Manage hardware asset tracking and inventory updates, ensuring compliance with internal asset management policies and audit requirements while overseeing lifecycle replacements to maintain accurate records for audit and regulatory purposes. Do you guys see that alignment again? Let me see in the chat. If you see the alignment, do you see it? So uh, why am I showing you guys this? I'm trying to get you guys to get rid of your mindset block. A lot of you are already like, oh, but I've never done anything in IT audit. I've never done X, Y, or Z. And by thinking that way, you automatically disqualify yourself. You don't even put in the effort to try and see where are my transferable skills. And I just showed you with three simple bullet points of traditional help desk work, right? how you can use ChatGPT to use that and change your resume. And now when you really think about it and you have a role that says relevant IT audit experience needed of two years, but you've been doing this for five years, don't you now see that you actually meet the requirements to apply for that job? If you do say, I do, I do, I do. So that's why that mindset block is important to remove first, because then your eyes will be open and you can actually see the opportunities instead of seeing the um, obstacles, right? Once you see the opportunities, the world is your oyster. You can go after whatever you want. But when you don't see the opportunities, unfortunately, you will hold yourself back. And it's not because it's not possible. It's because you believed it was not possible. I tell my students this, there are people that know less than you, that are confident and are applying for jobs you are not applying for. You that you know more, why are you not applying? So we need to make sure that we can do this. If you guys have learned exactly how you can update your resume to address some of these questions we get around experience and all of that, if you've learned that now, let me see in the chat before I go on to our next slide that we used to wrap up. So can you guys see that this is possible for you now? And again, I just use a help desk example today because that was what I was thinking about when I was putting this together. 
You can do the same thing from, for accounting. A lot of our accounting and finance folks find success because they, are, they already understand the audit language. Our project managers find success. Business analysts, QA analysts, testers, um, change managers, a lot of those people find success because they can sit down and actually see that, oh my, a lot of what I'm doing is actually compliance related. And then in addition to what we train in our program, they're able to combine that to find success. All right? So awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm seeing great feedback and I love it.